Hi, Mark. Welcome to Movie Junk. How are you? I'm well. Thank you very much for having me and being gracious enough to uh, wait on something. I was getting some information <laughs> as we were ready to start uh, <laughs> that I wanted to include. And I thought it would just be, you know, a, a quick uh, uh, question answered, but it was <laughs> literally being decided uh, by my booking agent from a convention floor with uh, uh, these uh, wonderful people in uh, Dallas, Texas at Texas Theater. So I have some information that I'll be uh, imparting to you later on, uh, but uh, you're very nice uh, to take, uh, you know, take a minute and, and let me have a little bit of time. I wouldn't have allowed it. So, <laughs> you're a great guy. Thank you, man. Mark, thank you so much. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to do my best to have the inner fan in me kind of, you know, stay within. But Mark, can't thank you enough for joining today. Um, you start in some of the all-time classic films, not just Cloud, but my, some of my all-time favorites as well. You know, Pee Wee's Big Adventure, both the Teen Wolf films, Leprechaun, Little Giants. I mean, you've been in some of the all-time classics. I want to jump right into you know, all these films, but before we get into that, I'd love to hear kind of how it all started for you, what got you inspired to become an actor, and just wanted to hear how that journey even began. Well, um, I started in high school. I, I had a, a very poor grade in English class, and uh, my teacher said, well, you know, if you guys that are struggling back there that don't pay attention, want some extra credit for a little bump in your grade, uh, you can do a, uh, a standard oratory for the uh, an assembly. And I thought, oh my, well, I really need some credit. And uh, I, I was fascinated back then with the movie Patton, uh, which believe it or not, was a new movie back, you know, when that, this happened, I was like a freshman in high school. And I entered it and uh, somehow uh, wasn't uh, killed or mutilated for the, the language in it, which was a miracle. And uh, I won a little gold medal. And I thought, wow, man, this is, this is fun, you know, standing in front of all these people. Uh, uh, wow. Uh, and then I, I started going to speech tournaments. And then I, I got a, uh, you know, a, a little help to go to college or whatever, university theater. And then non-union dinner theater and he had a video, which cried my soul. And finally, I just said, you know, I've either got to go to Broadway or I've got to go to Hollywood. And um, I knew um, from, from listening to a, an actor on a talk show late at night, uh, they asked him that question, um, you know, why did you desert, you know, decide to go to Los Angeles instead of New York. And he said, well, I was from a small town and I knew that it would be a lot easier on me psychologically to rub bumpers rather than elbows. And I had been to New York, had seen a lot of Broadway, a lot of off Broadway, uh, but uh, I decided to go to Los Angeles where I had never been before. And somehow, you know, God took care of me and, and here we are, man. Unbelievable, unbelievable. And I mean, just jumping right into 1985, I mean, you had some, uh, first of all, that was just a huge year. You know, I mean, we had, uh, you know, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. Um, we also had uh, Teen Wolf. And then we also had Back to the Future. Um, but I do want to jump into uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure as your role as Francis. Now, this was Tim Burton's, I think, first theatrical release. He had done a lot of shorts. I think he also had done a TV movie. Um, and Pee Wee up to this point was kind of more of like an adult, you know, comedy. It was different kind of from what we saw in the film. But how did you even hear about this role? Well, I just, uh, it was agent submission, you know, when they were casting. Uh, I had seen Paul on late night comedy. I hadn't seen his HBO yet. Didn't know who Tim Burton was. Uh, but, uh, you know, I heard some pretty uh you know great things about about the script and uh they brought me in they they had actually made a deal with another actor uh but i think they they saw me just as a backup just in case something didn't work out with the the person they had chosen 
And I went in and, uh, you know, at, at the level I was at that point, you know, you would go in and you would read for a casting director. The casting director wanted to bring you back for the director. Then you had a call back. But uh, this was straight in the room with all the producers and the director and Paul and the writers uh, at Warner Brothers. And uh, I read with Paul. And uh, I think by the time I got home, they, uh, they had uh, offered me the role. And I thought, wow, this, is, this never happens like this. Um, uh, but, um, you know, that's, that's how I uh, got on board with the project. And, uh, and it was, it was a lot of fun <laughs> doing the movie. You know, there was a, wasn't a lot of, uh, uh, things like this ever, you know, and there's, and there hasn't been since. Mm -hmm. And, uh, it's, it's interesting to me, usually there's something in a film that dates it. Uh, and I, 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 I'm, I don't get that feeling when I watch, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. I don't get that feeling when I watch, uh, comedies like Naked Gun and that was another one that I, mm -hmm. I just had a, a small role but it was in that time period I said uh to where you know they had been to see um you know Teen Wolf and and then they had uh of course seen Pee Wee's Big Adventure and all of a sudden you know I popped up out of the crowd with one little line and for some reason it uh it just it stuck so um yeah, that was that was a, a neat little time period, and it took me years to figure out. Um, you know, this this was a different period in film history for the audience. Uh, people they saw it in the theater, or they rented it at Blockbuster, or they bought it, and people would buy you know the VHS and of course they'd watch it over and over and over and it got to be an after school thing and then it got to be a college thing and then they introduced it to their kids and now I'm like three or four generations deep uh, of people you know that are coming to conventions and uh, you know the, the, the most beautiful thing they say to me is uh, you were part of my childhood and my children's childhood and my grandchildren's childhood. Uh, so, you know, in that sense, uh, your audience may not even know who Captain Kangaroo was, but uh, he, was, uh, he was like Mr. Rogers. Yeah. So, you know, I kind of feel, feel like that. Um, but, you know, I was, I was lucky to go on and, and do, uh, you know, have, have a full career. And, uh, you know, I'm still out there kicking. I ain't dead yet, baby. So, no, man, you're you're still you're still killing it. You're still killing. It. I want to touch on you know some of some of the uh, movies you did after uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure. But yeah, that Francis role. I mean, you just totally. I, I can't imagine anyone else you know doing that role. So that was a gift from God that it happened to fall on your plate. If even they had someone else, it, it was just the the film gods that were, were working there. And um, you know, being that okay, cool, you landed the role. Was there any added pressure into having to deliver now? Because, I mean, it was definitely, I mean, you had to look for it. It seemed like it was what Tim Burton was looking for. Um, but was there any added pressure into deliver? Or once you got it, it was just kind of like all steams ahead? Oh, it was, uh, you know, working with Paul, it was, uh, and, and Tim is a wonderful director. You know, he'll tell you everything yeah. uh, that he's not looking for <laughs> to where, you know, he, know, he knows how to talk to an actor. Yeah. So uh, it was very easy. And, and of course, Paul and I, of course, the chemistry worked in the in the audition. And once we got on, you know, on set and full in our full regalia or whatever, it was uh, it was magic. And that's the first thing I remember filming was the uh, iconic scene, you know, with uh, I know you are, but what am I? And uh, and then, you know, uh, there were a lot of other other scenes in that movie uh, that uh were a lot of fun and and uh just uh, you know the cast was wonderful uh the writers were wonderful uh having phil hartman on the set uh was was yeah. just a, a blessing or whatever um because he's so funny yeah uh and, and i knew you know the minute i saw him walk on set i went oh my god i gotta go talk to phil and we'd we'd got it up you know and uh uh, he was, uh, he, he was very, you know, 
uh, supportive and nice as, as you know, everybody was. So yeah, uh, it, was, it was a, it was a beautiful experience. Yeah. Phil, Phil Hartman is just a, a legend and we love, love all of his works. And we, we actually had the privilege of interviewing uh, Matthias Hughes, who was in big top Pee Wee. And he said the same thing, just the, the, you know, priority amongst everybody in the cast was just amazing to work with. And I love hearing that it was this, same thing, obviously, with, with this film as well, too. Were there any funny stories that you could share on set? I mean, I'm sure getting all these wonderful talents together. Are there any wonderful stories that you can share from on set? Well, at the end, when they eject uh, Francis from the bicycle and shoot him and he flies across the movie screen. I don't know how they, you know, how they they did that technically uh, on screen because yeah. it looks like it's animated or whatever but they decided they wanted to shoot it with uh steel cables coming up out of my suit at a drive-in with the screen in the background and they used a telescoping crane which went way way into the sky and um of course on action Somebody, you know, hits the seat or whatever that follows my butt up. And this thing literally jerked me into the air. It was like riding a rocket. And then when, when the crane stops, you don't. Yeah. You already have enough velocity that you're still moving upward. Yeah. So when you crest and come down, all the point, uh, point of impact from the harness goes right into your family jewels and your Bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. Uh, and um, I was so far up. I mean, people look like ants. All I could see were these little figures sitting in director's chairs, turning sideways, laughing. And there was stuff coming out of my mouth that I, words I didn't even know I knew. Wow. Uh, and uh, <laughs> that was uh, that was scary as hell. Uh, but it was a lot of fun at the same time, you know, and a great story. I think. Uh, you know, I have. Uh, you know, other, other stories to how I almost died Ooh. during Peter's Big Adventure. Um, and I didn't almost die then. But there was another time that uh, uh, I was in a bear costume. And this was a real bear that had been made into a costume. So it was very heavy. It's from Western costume. And this thing probably was from the 30s or the 40s. And the head, just the head weighed a ton. Yeah. And I... It, there's a scene where uh, uh, Pee Wee steps out on, on a, uh, a tightrope. Yeah. And then he looks up and the bear is rolling at him and pull the head off and it's Francis laughing. Well, to set that up, there was a probably a 12 to 15 foot uh, uh, distance uh, to a concrete floor on my left. And then, you know, a little walkway on the right. And they hadn't tightened up the handlebars. So halfway across on the first take, the handlebars do this. And of course, I have no control over shifting my weight. And I start teetering out. And I'm looking over like, oh, this is it. You know, if I hit, if I hit that, that pavement, I, I'm either going to be dead or I'm going to go to the ER. Oh, man. And these people came out of the woodwork and grabbed me and wrestled this thing back up into, into place and uh, and fixed the, <laughs> fixed the the handlebars or whatever and uh roll me back into position and then we went ahead and kept shooting uh but uh that's I, that's i think that scared me more than than the uh the crane jerking me in the air uh and it wasn't fun <laughs> The, anyway, the the bike itself, I mean, is just as important as any of the uh, the castmates, right? Is the bike still around? Is it is it still a the, the bike? There were a, a couple of them, but the bike is in the Hollywood Museum in a glass case. Awesome. I'm sure armed guards around it just in case anybody gets yeah. any ideas. And there then then there is one other that. Uh, is in the basement of the Alamo, but uh, I'm the only one that has access to it. Perfect. 
Perfect. So yeah. if we want to get to the Alamo and see it, we have to get to you first to take us there. Make. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing that also I always wondered uh, was that pool scene, you know, where Pee Wee came in and you guys were kind of wrestling and then he gave that, uh, I think it was the gum to you and your dad. What was used to, to have that black kind of slime or goo come down? What was that? Was that like syrup or what was that? Uh, it, I, I don't know. It must have been food grade something, but it was something the special effects department came up with. Yeah. They wanted it to run at a certain rate. They wanted it to show up on film. It tasted horrible. <laughs> and it actually kind of, you know, stained my skin to where they have to, you know, get that stuff off and then reapply the makeup every take. Yeah. But it was not uh, fruit or spearmint either. It was more like sewage, <laughs> toxic sludge of some kind, but uh, yeah, but it worked. So, what the heck? Absolutely. And they, uh, I mean, there, there's been, uh, you know, kind of like a recent revival around Pee Wee. And I know we had the holiday Pee Wee special, I think it was on Netflix you know, some years back. Um, are there any talks of doing another Pee Wee film and maybe having Francis return and get his revenge? Um, uh, no, not, not that I'm aware of anyone or anyway, but I would be one of the last people to know, I'm sure. But Paul's very busy. He has a documentary coming out about his life and he's also writing his memoirs. And I suspect that, the uh, the memoirs, uh, the book will come out, uh, you know, when the, uh, the documentary is done. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. He's been very busy with that. He's got other writing projects. Always. Yeah. And um, I, I think that, uh, uh, you know, if, if he can find, uh, you know, uh, uh, a little closure to uh, those items that are in his life right now, maybe he'll get back in the convention seat. That would, be, would be great. That would be, especially yeah. to see you two together. That would be unbelievable. Oh, hey, yeah. I mean, um, that would be a, a dream. I, it was, it was called because of Paul partially, uh, that I even, uh, looked into the convention thing. I, uh, I, I had, um, uh, I shot a film, the, uh, the last, uh, Leprechaun film, Leprechaun Returns. Return. Yeah. And I was returning and it was, uh, 40 something hours, uh, from, from Cape Town uh, to, uh, to, to Heathrow and then, uh, Atlanta to Dallas. And then I live in a small town near Tulsa, Oklahoma. So there was a problem with the plane, my last little leg before I got home. And I went in the Admiral's club or whatever the club was. And I heard this guy talking <clears throat> and I thought, I know that voice. But I couldn't get a good look at him. So I walked behind him and just caught the side of his face and listened to the voice a little more. And I, I went around the corner and got a cup of tea or whatever and, and came back around and looked. And there, there's Paul Rubin sitting there talking yeah. to this group of people. And he had, had just finished a, a convention in Dallas. Wow. And I walked up and, of course, you know, I... I've, I've been, uh, you know, in the air for all these hours. I, I must look like hell. And I walked up and he thought I was going to hit him up for an autograph like this. Um, <laughs> and uh, I said, Paul, it's Mark. Oh, man. And he goes, what are you doing here? I said, I don't know. What the hell are you doing here? Oh, <laughs> so, you know, what are the chances? So he was, uh, you know, he gave me some pointers and the, uh, and, uh, and help me uh, visualize what this, this whole convention thing was about. And, uh, and it's, uh, it's something that, uh, that I, I dearly love to do now. So yeah, uh, the, the thought, of, uh, the thought of, of being at the same convention uh, with Mr. Rubens would, would be wonderful. That'd be amazing, that'd be amazing. And so definitely, I mean, the momentum of, you know, the first Pee Wee film, you know, now we have, right, same time, same year, Teen Wolf comes out. Um, so again, now, so, I mean, this, 
movie also all time classic. You know, there was a sequel. There was a series that came out and I was actually just hearing that there's talks of a Teen Wolf movie coming out as well, too. Um, so I mean, with this with this film, Michael J. Fox, we mentioned Back to the Future came out the same year. There's a lot of basketball scenes. You make some really good long distance shots. Uh, you played basketball before. What was the training that went into oh, yeah, that? No, no, no I, I couldn't play my way out of a wet paper sack. Um, <laughs> There was, there was one shot that I did make and nobody was more surprised than me when that ball went in. And, the, and of course, the, the ball you see on camera was shot later, earlier, or whatever. It was a close-up on, on, the, on the hoop. But uh, it's too bad it wasn't, you know, the camera wasn't backed off enough because it didn't catch the fact that the damn thing actually went in. So when the camera captures my reaction, to the fact that the ball went in. That was really my reaction. It was like, what the hell? I made that shot, which would have been, you know, chubby. So it, it worked, worked out perfectly. Absolutely. And was this shot the same time as Pee Wee or did you have a break in between? And, and also, how did you book this? Was this something that was also that you auditioned for or how did you land this role? Oh, it, yeah, it it, 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 it most surely was, was something that I, uh, audition for and but I don't remember the process or you know any details to, to the audition process yeah. or, or how how it came to be but um, uh, Michael was doing um, I, I don't remember which came first uh, uh, Team Wolf or Pee Wee's Big Adventure but but uh, Michael was, Michael was definitely uh, toward the end of Team Wolf he was being whisked away in this mile long black limousine by uh, uh, Mr. Spielberg uh, at the end of his days uh, on the basketball court, he would, he would go and, and start shooting on Back to the Future. So I, I feel like the, the, you know, Teen Wolf rode on the coattails of Back to the Future, definitely. Um, but uh, at the same time, it, it just seemed to strike a chord with, with most people. Most people, you know, there's a very small percentage of people that are part of the in crowd, the clique or whatever. And I think that's what appealed to people was that, uh, you know, this little guy that shouldn't be able to play that, you know, great, he does it as a werewolf. And then you have the fat kid, chubby, me. Uh, I, think, I think it was just... Uh, 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 you know, uh, brought out that, uh, that encouragement for the underdog, you know, because people relate. I was the underdog. Yeah. You know, I was not one of the cool kids. So uh, I think, it, you know, it works on its own, but it definitely had, a, you know, a, a nice little breeze behind it yeah. with, uh, uh, with, with uh, Back to the Future, certainly. Yeah, no, T Teen Wolf is definitely one of those films I have to constantly rewatch, you know, at least once a year, if not every few months. And it's one of those feel good movies. The 80s was just great for these underdog, whether it's high school stories or sports stories, you know, like Karate Kid. And um, oh, absolutely. That's the first thing that came to mind. Yeah. yeah. Karate Kid. Yeah. So definitely. My bodyguard. Stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, I'm sure you know my next question, the, the franchise that I'm going to jump into. One of my all-time favorite franchises, by the way, and you were there from the beginning. You were there in the original film, which is Leprechaun. Man, Ozzy, amazing film. And again, you just recently came back in Leprechaun Returns. Love to hear, because, the, I mean, there's no way of knowing at the time that the movie that you're going to be in is going to spawn off eight films, right? So. What was it like working in the early days and obviously working with the legend Warwick Davis? Um, it was a lot of fun. Um, you couldn't ask for a, a better environment. You know, you had a, you were doing a horror film, but, but, uh, but yet you were doing a comedy. And, um, you know, Warwick was the perfect choice. It could have only been him. Uh, and then, uh, you know, the rest of the cast was great. Jennifer uh, was her first movie. And uh, she, uh, she had all the, the makings for 
you know, what she would show the world uh, that, that I saw, you know, during the, make, the making of that movie. Very bright, funny, quick, uh, and, and just a joy. Always a smile for people and, and ready to work because we worked some long days and nights. Um, so it was, uh, it was great. And then, um, you know, flash forward 25 years, something like that, uh, they decided that uh, um, the original <clears throat> film needed a part two because uh, part two, uh, well, number two through whatever, none of them had anything to do with the original, you know, storyline. Yeah, it's different. So when they d decided to, to do the Leprechaun Returns, they, they brought me back and it was much different technology, uh, makeup, everything was, uh, you know, quite a bit, quite a bit different. Um, what they were able to do, the prosthetics that they, uh, they used on uh, Lyndon Porco uh, were uh, much easier, more easily applied uh, and you didn't have the, the stench uh, that Warwick put up with uh, the, uh, uh, the glue and everything. So it was, it was just a, you know, it was a different cast, whatever. I was definitely the old man. And one of the cast members uh, asked me how it felt to be uh, the OG. And it took me a minute. I thought she meant old geezer. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it goes, no, you know, <laughs> the uh, original gangster. And I thought, okay, that's, that's funny. Um, it, it was, uh, it was, it was uh, you know, a, a different experience totally, but... Uh, of course, uh, uh, I never expected to go through that much makeup, two, two and a half hours of, of prosthetics. Yeah. Um, and uh, and uh, then I, I got a little taste of what a lot of actors, you know, go through, including Warwick. But uh, my God, Warwick did how many of those films? Seven? Seven of them. Uh, yeah. Six, six actually, six. Oh, okay, so well, he did his time in hell. That's all I can say. Yeah, uh, and and Lyndon did an awesome job, and I think it was the year before this where he did Cult of Chucky, where he was the kind of like the body of Chucky um, in the scenes. So he he actually, I really like this performance. He's actually a really really good actor. I like the job that he did in Leprechaun Returns, and uh, I don't want to spoil the fate of, of Ozzy for the fans that haven't seen it. Definitely watch it if you guys haven't seen it yet. But yeah, definitely it seemed like, uh, you know, a lot more makeup uh, for you in, in this film. And yeah, definitely, you know, Ozzy went through a lot in the in the first one. So for him to escape and for us to see him, you know, 30 years later, it seems like. And yeah, definitely uh, it was great to see you back. That was one, you were one of the main reasons why I watched it because I knew that your character was coming back. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I agree, Linda did a great job. And uh, he, he's, a, he's a lot of fun to work with. Yeah. Uh, he was very fortunate to get that job. I mean, uh, you know, he, he hadn't really done that much. And all of a sudden, bang, he's, he's you know, playing the title role yeah. in that franchise. Uh, so, um, you know, I'd love to see another one with him yeah. uh, at some point. But that's, uh, you know, that's, uh, that's beyond my pay grade. So <laughs> we'll see. But, you know, I think there's a lot of people hoping for that. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, I do have just a few fan questions that I wanted to share with you. And I promise they're all uh, nice questions. Um, so you were also in Little Giants. I, I couldn't let you escape yes. that. When I saw this question come in, I was like, I'm taking this one because it's also part of my question I wanted to ask. Rick Moranis, what was it like uh, working with uh, Rick Moranis? You were Zoltex dad what was it like working on yeah. that film? uh rick was a really nice guy he would absolutely go out of his way to to talk to people and have conversations and there was a lot of downtime you know in the bleachers or whatever so uh uh he hadn't had an opportunity to uh you know to uh, have some conversations with people and they really enjoyed it um uh, it was um it was it was crazy um you know i i basically was you know uh the the farting kids dad <laughs> so 
um, there were all these football teams. And uh, there was uh, the actors. Yeah. And there was uh, uh, the opposing team. And then the stunt opposing team. There were like five teams of these kids. And all of their parents, all of their, uh, you know, stage mothers or whatever, uh, it was it was like a, just a little city of little people and uh, their parents. So you know, you're, going to my trailer was <laughs> uh, was was a lot of fun, you know, because it was just, it was uh, it was always you know something going on that uh, uh, you know once you got in the bleachers or whatever, you knew what was going to happen. But uh, you were the goalpost. I remember you were the goalpost. Remember when you guys were moving. But it yeah, be- you know, I need to I need to watch that film. And I, you know, especially you know, coming up on the fall with the fall football for, you know, little league and kids football and high school football. Uh, I need to. I definitely need to 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 watch that again. Yeah, absolutely. And um, the next question that we have is: You also play John Wayne Gacy. And I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing, but because I've seen your character so much more than the actual John Wayne Gacy, I thought that maybe it was it was you for all these years. But what was it like preparing for that role? Um, and also, too, the the movie, the uh, the Joker, the Joaquin Phoenix one. I thought I read somewhere that there was some inspiration with your character or the John Wayne Gacy character uh, that kind of they had some inspiration towards how he performed. Um, I thought I read something like that, but what was it like preparing for that film? Well, that's the first time I'd heard that about the Joker. I, that maybe there was some inspiration from uh, uh, John Wayne Gacy's uh, uh, clown makeup or something, but that's, that's the first time I had heard that. Uh, didn't have a long time, didn't have a lot of time uh, to prep for the film, uh, but it was something that was on the nightly news something in every magazine, something that was in the papers for quite a, a, a good period of time. So I, I kind of, you know, learned about Gacy and the case as it unfolded. So it was, it was not new to me at all. Um, and then, the, you know, there were a lot of people to talk to just, uh, you know, that, uh, well, you know, I have an aunt that lives in that area, or blah, blah, blah. Uh, but, but as far as, um, you know, digging deep into it or whatever. If it's not on the script, yeah, uh, not in the script, uh, you know, there's just so much of that that you can interject. But uh, you know, mentally, you know, I I knew where this creep was, and I just tried to, uh, you know, use it when I could. You know, this was a guy that was, uh, uh, you know, master of deception. And, uh, and just a, a demonic son of a bitch. So, uh, you know, it wasn't that, that hard for me to, uh, to uh, apply that uh, to the role. I mean, I, I wish, uh, you know, I, I had, you know, it would have been great to have uh, a, long, uh, a longer time, you know, before we started shooting, but it was a, yeah. a very you know low budget film and uh it was just uh you know i think a couple of weeks before we started turning frames on the camera yeah yeah no i mean the film uh, it's it's sort of become kind of like a cult classic so it's actually uh, you know something that uh, i still see pop up on tv um it's very easily uh, streamable as well too so uh no definitely i mean i would have never known that you had such a short time to to make it because the movie came out great. Uh, as I mentioned, it's you know, sort of become a cult classic. Um, but yeah, no, definitely um, excellent job in the film. And Mark, I do want to be respectful of your time because I, to be honest, a fan of me wants to talk to you for hours. Um, but I want to be respectful of your time. And again, want to thank you for making the time for, for joining us. Um, but I do know um, that you are readily accessible to fans. You are on Cameo. So if fans want to reach out to you, you can, you know, give them, you know, like a birthday message, um, you know, and, and, and memo me, memo me is, is both uh, another, another platform. I'm on both, both platforms. Uh, if you can't make it to a convention to, to get a personalized autograph, uh, eight by 10, I have a, a little online store, uh, the Mark Holson store. It's, uh, 
just uh, markholtonstore.com. And there's other, there's a lot of other items on there, a lot of uh, apparel and uh, mouse pads, you know, uh, a, a broad price range. Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I, I, I had somebody from New Zealand order a, an, you know, an eight by 10. And I, my God, the guy paid, uh, you know, two or three times just in, in shipping. And I thought, well, why would somebody do that? And, you know, of course, you know, a friend of mine said, well, look, if he didn't do that, he'd have to get on a plane, book a hotel, you know, so you go to a convention, you know, and, and uh, it, it would have been the most uh, expensive eight by 10 on the planet. <coughs> so, and then a, a, a lady, very sweet lady that's also on Instagram, Joanne, in case uh, she uh, hears this or whatever, uh, took forever for her to get one, but she finally got one for, to Columbia. Uh, so, I, you know, it just it just blows my mind, you know, that uh, the people that are out there that that come to my little store and and find something that uh, they want, and they know that you know it's it's made out to them and the coloring that they want, the sentiment they want, and uh, and done uh, done you know ASAP. So that's a lot of fun. And, but, uh, you know, what, what's really so much fun uh, for me are, are making appearances at the conventions. Um, April 23rd and 24th, I'll be at the Fayetteville Comic Con in North Carolina. So come on out, uh, have a chat, get a pick. Got a big broad selection of uh, eight by tens from all the movies. And, uh, and, and we'll do a selfie, whatever you want to do. So uh, I'll be there for that Comic Con. And here in two weeks, I just found out um, that's what we were waiting on, actually trying to get some, some information. The Texas Theater in Dallas is having two screenings, one on uh, the 14th and the 15th of April, coming up, it's like in two weeks. And they will be two Mark Holton films. I will be there. I guess for question and answer uh, afterwards. And also I will be signing autographs. So if, you, if you're in the Texas, uh, Dallas, Fort Worth area or anywhere in Texas uh, and uh, you wanna come to the beautiful, beautiful theater uh, and see a, a, a comedy film, then please do. Cause I'll, I'll be there to greet you. <laughs> And uh, are you able to share what films fans could see, or is it a secret until that 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 is a, a secret? Uh, I mean, you know, I I could say, well, it'll probably be this or probably that. I know the probabilities, but I don't like to announce things that uh, you know, it's like it might you know not be what I suspect. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but, but but that info is is going to be out quick. Yep. So if you'll just go to the Texas Theater in in Dallas and look at their schedule. There should be something up uh, pretty quick. Perfect, perfect. And we'll go ahead and share the links to the, the cameo, the memo, me, your personal website as well. Oh. So fans that watch the uh, the podcast can uh, quickly click to them as well, um, as well as some of your upcoming appearances. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely um, take advantage of meeting Mark. Um, you know, amazing, amazing. I mean, you know, just being able to kind of relive your childhood and. Sounds like he's got wonderful selections of uh, different pictures. I'm sure it's going to be one of the movies that, um, you know, that you're closely connected with. Um, but Mark, just want to thank you for taking the time. Again, tried my best to have the fan in me stay inside, but loved hearing these stories from you. And just want to thank you for making the time to, uh, to meet with us today. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate it. I've had a wonderful time and uh, maybe somewhere down the road we shall cross paths again my friend absolutely hopefully as long as it's the good side of francis that's all <laughs> i really appreciate it and i, I definitely would, would love that and uh hopefully we could save some room for uh, for round two if we hear of another leprechaun film coming out uh if we have some, and again i don't want to spoil the fate but uh something that brings your character back we'd love to have you back on the podcast well there is a uh, I, this happened yesterday uh, and it was an April Fool's. There is a, uh, a gentleman called Leppy Laddie on Instagram that does 
all things, everything you wanted to know and more about Leprechaun, uh, anything about Warwick, anything about uh, Lyndon Porco. And of course, I'm, I'm included in that. But uh, I uh, got my cup of coffee yesterday on April Fool's Day and uh, finally got around to uh, checking on my social media. And bang, right in front of me is an announcement from the Sci-Fi Channel that there was going to be another Leprechaun movie directed by Mark Jones. I was mentioned. And I'm looking at this, and it was a complete load of bullshit. Oh, man. That he dreamed up. But he didn't let me know ahead of time. Didn't give me a heads up. And I don't think he gave Mark Jones heads up either. Uh, but, uh, you know, he was pretty quick, you know. The, the, the comments uh, in the post said, uh, this has to be an April Fool's trick. And, you know, he fessed up. But uh, I wrote that little leprechaun. A Shalalian. Next time I go to Atlanta, Lepi Laddie, you little bastard. <laughs> oh man, great, great way to uh, to end on that. And Mark, thank you very much. Hope to stay connected soon and can't wait to share with the fans. Thank you very much for, for joining today. Thank you for your patience at the beginning of this thing. I appreciate it, sir. Thank you, sir. Take, Take care. care.